become the Eastern Bloc. Well, it's really it Can you please join with me with the Pledge of Allegiance? Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
of joining the East Coast Greenway, which is a rails to trail that goes um, off road from Key West to Calais, Maine. Now we're just concentrating on our little 17 mile segment here uh, in New Hampshire, but that actual, the full thing from Calais, Maine to Florida Keys is about 31% complete. Um, as you know, that railroad goes right through the town, downtown Hampton, it would be great for our retail establishments. And that's exactly what this piece is gonna talk about. Um, Mr. Arnett's gonna talk about some of the economic development opportunities surrounding rails to trails and what they've done for other towns. And then we're also gonna go down to Salisbury and see kind of how that rail trail is functioning down there and, and you know how it's working. So um, we just wanted you to know that the residents of Hampton are, are behind this idea. I haven't met many or actually any that have really come up and opposed it. So um, just wanted to make you guys all aware of that as well. I know we don't own it yet, but we're just asking you guys to be prepared because they've been in negotiations for two and a half, and some would say seven years. Um, and we're really hoping that once, once it does get acquired that we're ready to go and we're not you know, crossing bridges that we can come up with uh, answers already. So anything you guys can do to help us as well. Um, we're trying to form so that we can do any small maintenance that would be associated with the trail. Um, to help lessen the burden to the taxpayers as well. So, I'm glad you came in because it was on my list to mention to invite people to go to that on Saturday. So, so. do you want to just mention again the date, the time, and where it is? It is Saturday, October twenty second, nine a.m. to noon at the Seabrook Public Library, and, and then we'll go down and look at the Salisbury Coast right. Trail. So the people watching on TV we can know where it is and and the time and everything. So that's good. Yep. Great. I would just like to say how much I'm in favor of it, and uh, I won't be there though because that's my time. I'm busy at work. I, I appreciate it. Thank you I very am much. Very much in support of it. I, I won't speak to everybody on this board, but I, I think a lot of us are very much <coughs> in favor of it. I, and again, I can't be there either. I'm going to be out of town, but uh, I, I, I had it on my list to bring up to mention it. So I'm glad you guys were here beforehand. Thank well, well, thank you very much, and if any of you guys could join us, that'd be great. And, um, you know, just if there's anything that you have questions of us that we can help facilitate any conversations that need to be had, um, I know right now we're trying to get the state to, to, to put their bargaining shoes on. Um, there's appraisal issues and things of that nature. Um, but anything that we can do so that Hampton is ready to go um, when we get that, that email that says we finally acquired it, um, let us know, please. Have you uh, just one thought? You might want to talk to the group Experience Hampton. Yep, we are, we we have talked with them. Um, so yep. So just because they're they're interested in this also. So great. All right. Thank you. Thank guys. you. Anybody else would like to speak a public comment? Mr. Silberdeck. Good evening, Norm Silberdeck, 70 Time in a Row, representing rational taxpayers of Hampton. One of the things that we do, at least I do, is spend my Monday nights watching you folks on television and in your budget deliberations to various departments. However, I don't have a budget to work with, and I understand that you're working from the manager's budget as a preliminary document, which I presume should be available to the public, and so far it's not on on your website, and I wonder if you could make that available. I asked the budget committee if they had one, if I could get one, but they don't have one either. So it would just seem it would serve many purposes to have that document available. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anybody else from the public? Seeing none, I will bring it back to the board for announcements and community calendar. Regina. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, I just want to remind everyone at home in the public that we are still in an extreme drought uh, situation, so just keep that in mind when you are using water. Thank you. Nothing tonight, sorry. Phil? Oh. Negative, sir. Rick? No, I'd just like to uh, say thank you to the uh, fire department for a good job they did down at the casino. I'm sure they appreciate that. We're going we're gonna to hear from him tonight, but... Uh, I, I have a couple of things. One, the, and it has to do one with the fire department on their, their fire prevention weekend uh, open house. They did an excellent job. Uh, for those of you that missed it, um, there was a lot of information there. They had their, dart, had their, their helicopter there. Uh, you can get a chance to look at it. The Seacoast Chiefs had their mobile command vehicle there. Uh, there was a lot to do. There were a lot of kids there that got a chance to walk around all the trucks and see what was going on. They had CPR demonstrations there they had fire extinguisher demonstrations and I'm sure the chief's going to talk a little bit about that tonight but 
Uh, I think uh, they did an excellent job and that they should be commended for that. <clears throat> Second of all, um, I got a notice from uh, the clock committee. Uh, they still have, uh, they, had, they had heard that there were still some people out there that wanted to buy some bricks, the, uh, the engraved bricks. Uh, they had shut off the uh, time to do that, but they still have an order form at the Parks and Rec's office. She's showing me one right now. Um, so if uh, you would like to put a, I guess you'd call it a memorial brick, or a, uh, if you'd like to have one engraved, uh, they are still taking the order forms and Monday. till Monday. I'm, I'm just told that, that they will be taking them till Monday. So if you can, uh, if you want to order a brick, please con contact the rec department. On a sad note, I'd like to offer our condolences to uh, uh, Patrolman Robert Sparks and his family. Bob is a 30-year um, veteran of our part-time force, and uh, he lost a niece that was very close to him this year, uh, this past week, and uh, I'd like to send our condolences out to, to Bob and his family. Okay, next thing we have is the consent agenda. We have a warranty deed for Hilliard Drive, parade and public gathering licenses for the American Legion, the Christmas parade, three street closures for the Christmas parade, a Meadow Pond Road Healy Wedding, and a one-day entertainment license for the Meadow Pond Road Healy Wedding. That is the consent agenda. So you move the consent agenda. Second. Seconded by Rick. All those in favor? Unanimous. The next thing we have is the approval of the September 26th minutes. Make the motion that we approve the September 26 minutes. Motion, second. motion by Regina, seconded by Jim to approve the minutes. All those in favor? Unanimous. Motion to accept the October 3rd minutes. I'll make the motion. Motion by Regina, seconded by Jim. Jim, all those in favor? <laughs> Unanimous. Okay, the next appointments are Diana Martin, Parks and Recreation Quarterly Report. <coughs> Good evening. evening. I, told, I, told, I was told to be brief, so I will be very brief tonight. Um, I wanted to uh, update you on the parks. Um, they've been doing all their regular maintenance, picking up trash. They've also, I've, they've also been helping me with a warrant article for this year, and um, that's for the Five Corners Playground and the lawn bid. And they've been doing all of their getting ready for the flag football season and all of that. Uh, also, on, on under parks, the USS Hampton crew has started helping out the parks department with the replacement of the pieces for the Kids' Kingdom playground, which hasn't been easy at all because some of the pieces don't quite fit. Um, but they're moving along on that. In the parking lot so far this year, we still have five concerts, um, but we've made $557,801 this year. So a little bit behind um, last year. Last year was 567 420, but we'll make that up. So we're doing really great there, and um, we got a great system in place as far as keeping those parking lots clean. So that's been working out great this year. For recreation programs, um, our Coric Softball League and Men's Softball League are both done for the summer, and we're holding our uh, banquet for that this Thursday. And um, let's see, our K-2 through sports program is underway. We still have some openings for that if anyone's interested in, in signing up for the K-2 through sports program, which runs throughout the whole school year. We started up our Senior Citizen Club again this year, um, but this year we're going to change the name to it to the Active Senior Social Club so that people understand that it is a social club. It's not like going to a meeting or whatever. We're trying to get recruit more members to that. Um, we're offering a theater camp right now for Halloween. It's called Monster Street, and actually one of the shows is tonight at the Old Salt. We are offering a family pumpkin carving night for Halloween this year. That's going to be this Saturday, October 22nd at the Tuck Building from 5 to 7. It's free. Just bring your own pumpkin. And we're also offering for Halloween, we're going to do a... We're going to watch a Halloween movie and we're going to make some luminaries so that we can light up the field going to the parking lots before the movie. And we've put on our Facebook page a number of movies that we're hoping people will 
pick which one they would like to see, and then whoever gets the most votes, that's the movie that we'll be showing that night. That's going to be Friday, October 28th, and it will start at 5.30. So people will be making the luminaries at 5.30, and then the movie will start at 6.15. That is also at the Tuck Building, and that is also free. And I do want to remind people that trick-or-treating is always October 31st in Hampton. It's 5.30 to 8. So we've gotten quite a few calls on that. Um, let's see. Trick-or-treating. We've done all the planning and registration for a few trips coming up. We have New York City. Um, Portland Symphony Magic of Christmas is back, and that is going to be on December 16th. And Freeport Shopping, which is on November 16th, coming right up. Uh, we're working on the Hampton Rec Ski and Ride Program and the local league, which is our high school rec basketball league. We have a few trips still coming up for theater trips. We've had quite a few as the year has gone by, but we still have West Side Story coming up and A Christmas Carol. And there's still spaces on both of those. And we've also booked the U.S. Army Jazz Ambassadors at the Merrill Auditorium on November 13th. Um, we've had a number of Oxford casino trips, and we still have coming up October 20th, this Thursday, and November 9th. We have another one. We're also putting together our holiday activities, and we're starting with the tree lighting ceremony, which is going to be on December 2nd, starting at 6.30 with hay rides, and then 7 o'clock we'll light up the tree. And, of course, we'll always have the horse-drawn rides, the cartoon characters, and Santa Claus, and we're also gearing up for the parade on December 3rd, starting at 1.00. And we're offering a new class, um, a senior holiday craft class on December 5th and December 12th if needed. We got some donated items, craft kits, so we thought we would open up the Tuck Building on Monday the 5th at 12 p.m. It's $10, and you get the kit, something like this, if you can see that on TV. There's all different ones, though, to choose from, so first in to choose, first in to sign up will get their choice of what they can do. And we also are offering a couple new programs, Mindful Mondays, which um, is for third through fifth graders at the Tuck Building. Um, Cat Cooper Pilates, which will be at the Tuck Building, $28 for one class per week, $56 for two classes per week. That's new. And um, we have a new Spanish immersion class. This class is for third through fifth graders that are interested in learning Spanish, and this class will be held on November 3rd through December 15th. And we've also added a wheel fit skate sessions, which is uh, roller skating that we're going to offer down at the um, roller rink. And that is on Sundays and, and Tuesdays. So if anyone wants to know more about that, they can just call our office to come sign up. And that's very inexpensive. That's only $5 to sign up for those. Quick enough for you guys? That was excellent. <laughs> and I was going to talk about the uh, bricks, but you did it. So. Very good. Regina, you have anything? Uh, no, no questions. Great report. Plenty of activities for everyone to do. There's so. plenty more. I just was trying to be brief today. So. Awesome. Thank Thanks. you. Jenna, good, good report. Stop. Roller rink. Where's the roller rink so people know? It's down at the on the it's on Hard Art Way next to the skateboard park, flag football, volleyball, flag football, roller rink. Right. Okay, just so people you know they yep. might think there's a new roller rink in. Uh... Yeah. Oh, it's been there actually. Quite it's been long. there a long yeah, time. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, so they might be thinking. You know? Yeah. So, no, thank you, Director. Great report. Rick. No, <clears throat> it sounds like you've got a lot going on. And we do. Uh, we do. There always seems to be a lot going on over there, and. You seem to be there quite often, so thank you for all that you do. You're welcome. The only one question I had, and I, yep. and I the Apple Fest, are they going to do that this year, or, or sadly no? No, sadly no. Uh, that Nita Nemchek, the, the Hobbs House, was a partner with us, and she did a lot of the work with that with us, and um, she had some things come up in her life last year, and... Um, it's just time. There's just not enough time. So hopefully we'll bring back something like that. I should also mention we're working on the um, holiday thank, uh, holiday Christmas dinner, turkey dinner, too. I forgot to seniors. put that in the report <coughs> for the seniors. Yeah. Okay. So that'll come out pretty soon, too. But, yeah, hopefully we can do something like that again in the next I know the Apple coming. Fest was always Very popular. Get. So, yeah. okay. All right. All right. Thank you. Next one we have is Norm. Yeah. Welcome. 
I'll try and keep our presentation under two hours. <laughs> <laughs> I have Steve and John uh, with us, and uh, you may have gotten these already, but I'll give you a handout. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Then I'll give you Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Norma. This is our quarterly report on the, on the uh, trust funds, and for the quarter, the real estate fund, which is uh, the big one that we manage, um, had an investment gain of 459000 and uh, paid the, uh, the town 170000 in uh, in dividends and interest, and for the year, over a year-to-year -year period for 12 months, we generated a two million two gain and uh, a six hundred and seventy-eight thousand dollar distribution of of, uh, of uh, income to the town. And then it shows the last three years and the last five years we're up seven point three five million. So we're we're doing we've had a really good quarter and continue. You know, God willing, it'll, it'll continue that way. And the other smaller funds also had gains. They have a more conservative portfolios so that liquidity becomes an issue in case the town needs the money immediately. So they're in, uh, in quick assets so that we can, uh, we need to provide some funds to any of the, for any of the capital reserves, et cetera, it's at hand, but each one also made money, 1500 on the uh, Winnicott School. Common Capital Reserves made 4000 for the quarter. And the uh, Common Trust Fund made 9000 And you can see their, their report for the, uh, for the year. So overall, we uh, were pleased with the results. Um, we, as I mentioned to you last time we were here, we were conducting through a subcommittee of which Steve was part of it. Uh, interviews and vetting uh, potential investment advisors following uh, uh, the advice and uh, counsel we received from you all in the past. And so uh, the subcommittee reached out to seven investment advisors that had either had previous contact with, uh, with the town of Hampton or that we knew. And further out of, out of that group, uh, two uh, wanted to take it to the next step to propose. And Bearing Point, which is now the new name of Mackinson and Company, David has bought the firm and it's been renamed, uh, also wanted to propose and he submitted a written proposal. And, and today we met for a half hour, it was televised, with uh, each of the prospective candidates. And um, and they all had very good presentations. They're all highly qualified. And we now uh, will have a meeting next Tuesday, assuming we can get this room at 4 o'clock and <coughs> Joan Rice was going to check into that. We will then have a chance to re review all the materials that we receive, reflect on the discussions of the uh, presentations, and we will draw a conclusion, and then we will seek another appointment with the select and let you know what we, we've decided to do. Very good. Excellent. And that is, we're happy to answer any questions you might have. Um, Phil, would you like to start off? No, I don't. Thank you for your continued excellence, Mr. Silberdick, and the members appreciate it very much. You're Rick? welcome. It looks like things are going very well. Thank you. Regina? Yeah, those gains look, the unrealized gains look great, so yeah. continue the good work. Jim? Yeah, I was at your meeting for the presentation on that. I didn't stay for all the other presentations, but uh, I was impressed with what was going on and everything. Impressed with how you've managed the fund and how's it gone. So thank you very much. You're quite welcome. Thank you for the work you do. You guys have uh, done a great job at okay. managing our trust funds, and uh, we appreciate all that you are doing. Okay, great. Thank you very much. One is budget reviews for the fire department. Right. 
Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Chairman, I am going to preface this by saying that uh, this evening we have a situation going on right now in town. There's uh, a text message that just came over my phone. There's a boat on rocks out inside the Bell Buoy, and we are deploying our Marine unit. So the deputy may end up leaving shortly, depending on the situation, okay? Um, I come tonight before you to present the 2017 budget for the fire department. Um, we have done our best to maintain a uh, low profile. There were some areas that we tried to increase because we felt that it was necessary, especially in the training areas. Um, and we realigned some areas to better reflect what we have seen over time, especially with the five-year moving average. So um, I'm ready to begin, and I'll take questions any time. How's that? Okay. Okay. Um, basically, and the way I started when I first had to present the budget to you guys in, in front of you, I said, well, you know, I'd like to be brief, so let's start at the back page. Uh, if you want to just take a peek at the back page, you'll see that this budget represents a 4.37% increase. And much of that is uh, is the result of some of our requests as well as additional contractual obligations that have gone about, about with the wage items that have gone through with the raises that were um, delivered this year, and thank you for that. Uh, in the administration level, regular wages remains, uh, there. all of the wage items that you see, they're within contractual obligations, and that's the reason for their increases. Um, let's see. Uh, gasoline, we see an increase in that, but the way we're doing gasoline now, we're changing the way we did it before. We're no longer with the state. You know that we're using the WEX system. Uh, our gallonage is actually attributed to, or it's a, uh, it's being, the data is being collected by the WEX system, and then Christy is actually working with that? Yep. Okay, so um, the increase comes from real dollars realized and also gallons used. Um, below that line, you see a $7,500 request uh, for new equipment. We are in need of a new copier. I had come before you last year to request a new copier, and we weren't able to purchase it. We had a copier that has now been, uh, it was rendered obsolete for several reasons. First, it, it was broken, and it was costing a, a significant amount to repair. Um, and then the the machine was repaired technically for a little while. Uh, we were using it as a fax machine, um, and it, it became obsolete with the software system. It was in, unable to work with the Windows system, the upgrade that we received, so it wasn't able to talk, and it was no longer functioning as a copier. Uh, we've disposed of that. Uh, through the console of Mr. Walsh, and that was taken down to DPW uh, with the memory erased, Mr. Walsh, as we had discussed. So we're seeking a copier for the fire station right now. Currently, the one that we're using uh, wasn't fire prevention. They're, now it's a communal copier, and it's uh, also on its last legs. The one that we disposed of was um, almost 10 years old, and it was purchased used. Uh, this one here is at least that old. It's, it, I believe it's eight years old, and it's still it's barely functioning, so we're looking to do that. Uh, any questions in the administrative portion? Okay. Any or, questions? Do you want to hold questions until the end? Uh, Up to you. We can do it either way. I mean, it, as we're right, going through it, if, it, you, if it's, if sometimes it's easier that way, but okay. you have to go back. If, All right. Uh, then. Any questions? I do. Go ahead. Okay, under tuition uh, reimbursement, yes, sir. There, were, there was uh, 3,000 requested in 2,500. There was, um, I just wondered. Sure. So tuition reimbursement line item uh, was placed in last year with uh, the help of Mr. Welsh uh, to help us meet the contractual obligation, or actually the town regulation for tuition reimbursement. Mm -hmm. um, initially, as that program was rolled out, we had a candidate who uh, met the criteria and went through two classes and requested reimbursement and did so. Uh, several others have requested now that they would like to use that line item. So it was my goal to bump that line item initially uh, to basically service the need. So that was okay. that was the main item. Okay. Fine. Rick, any questions? No, thank you. Mm -hmm. Phil, any questions? Okay. Very good. So now we're going to fire suppression. Sure. So regular wages haven't changed except for the fact of the uh, contractual obligations. Further on down, you see several changes in the line items for uh, overtime wages, overtime callback, sick leave coverage, and vacation coverage. 
these line items were uh, adjusted, and um, Ms. Pulliam and Mr. Welch uh, saw fit to, to assist us in doing so as a better means of record keeping for several years, and I don't have to tell the board that uh, we were under default budgets, and some of these line items remain legacy items. They weren't adjusted. We were initially described uh, two years ago to come in with a zero-based budget, and again last year, so that we could keep all costs down. So those line items didn't change, but it also did not represent what was being expent uh, annually on that line item as a result of all of the overtime that was being generated for several reasons, bereavement and you know several of the, the lines that that one covers. Um, the adjustment more closely fits with a five-year moving average. Uh, as you may or may not understand from seeing the numbers in the one on the left of this, if you see the 2015 actual, we're at 325,000. Uh, last year was very similar. We had a very large outlay because of all the injuries. And I know that I've been before you to talk about injuries and how we've had people out for an extensive period of time. Uh, in fact, we've actually had uh, two or three recent uh, employees that had to retire out or were, were at the end of their um, benefit cycle as a result of injuries that were received on the job. And now their positions became vacant. We're hiring new because of that. Uh, we are taking measures to eliminate the injuries, and in fact, if you remember, I was in front of you, I believe, to request about a power load system, and that will help us to get patients into the ambulance. Um, it was a significant expense, but I think that it, over time, will pay for itself in quick order. So the, the 174000 for the line item over, overtime wages is uh, it's in line with the five years past that we're looking at. When we look at the OT wages uh, for callback, the um, callback line item two years ago was at $52,000. And then the Budget Committee last year brought it down to $25,000 in relation to where they saw the money expenditures. As you know, this is a bottom line budget, and that offset some of the other budgetary line items, especially the OT callback that, that we were seeing there. Um, it's been brought down again right now to $15,000. This is our line item when we transmit boxes. So uh, as an example, the casino fire last week cost about $3,500 in overtime for all of the parties that, that came in off shift. Um, that's the line item that we pay those people out of. Tonight's box seven will come out of that line item. So that's, that's what that represents. Uh, sick leave and vacation coverage, they've been adjusted to better reflect our experience rates. Um, with the, the coverage as it stands, you'll see that on the vacation side, we have already spent 221000 uh, this year, but in a five-year average, we're looking at about one hundred ninety, and I believe that to be accurate. Okay. Um, career incentives, that line item is actually for paramedic and AEMT, all of the incentives that have to do with uh, emergency medical services. And the funding that comes from that, you'll see that's a negative number. That's uh, transferred from the emergency services fund. With uh, That's the explicit reason for it. So the line item is there, but the money is actually transferred out of the account. Um, protective clothing shows a small increase of 3.28%. We do know that we are looking at uh, approximately a 5% increase from Bergeron. Uh, we are also not looking to buy six sets this year. Uh, however, that said, we have had a lot of new employees. As a matter of fact, tomorrow we're fitting uh, another candidate for um, a probationary firefighter. Uh, we had one hired two week, three weeks ago. Um, he's been outfitted for gear. All of these, all of the new firefighters require new gear. As you might imagine, it has to be fit pretty well, and that's the line item for that. Looking forward, I know that I had mentioned to you uh, in the past that I was looking to do program replacement. I'd like to do four sets a year because in 2019, all of the ones that were purchased by grant uh, come to pass, and they, they essentially expire as far as the, the um, limited life expectancy of fire turnout gear. Um, Gasoline, again, we've already discussed. Diesel fuel has gone up as a result of the gallon, which has been recognized um, in all other line items as well. New equipment. There has been an adjustment there. The new equipment line item um, is for new equipment, as you might imagine. My intentions were to purchase hydraulic uh, rescue tools, uh, commonly referred to as JAWS, um, the JAWS of life. And Engine 4, when it was outfitted and was delivered to the beach station, came. We had to purchase hose for it, as you might imagine. It's a brand new engine, but it needed hose. It needed some tools, some of our tools, especially um, axes and halligan bars. They're, they're okay. They can be transported from one to the other. 
Uh, hoes certainly needed to be outfitted. We needed new hoes. Uh, most of our hoes can date back 35 years, and the expected life um, for hose, fire hose is 10 years, so we saw it fit to purchase new. This did not come with reels, and several of our other fire engines have a generator that's on board as well as reel system that allows us to use the jaws of life uh, to cut up cars and do what we might need to do to extricate uh, a person from a vehicle. We're looking at a portable system, battery operated, and so the initial thought was to put it in this line item, uh, as well as an ice rescue sled. Um, previously at the budget committee, you saw that we were discussing ice rescue sleds actually for the last two years, and the call came in and said that, uh, well, you've never had an ice rescue. And last year, if you remember in the winter time, we had a viral video that went out over uh, social media of two firefighters that rescued a dog that had gone through the ice. and. In doing so, they employed a, a rowboat that was on the side of the side of the bank there. So it wasn't a rowboat. I'm sorry, <laughs> a leaky rowboat. A very leaky rowboat. They did a great job, but they were suited up. They were actually going to have to swim um, if it weren't for the rowboat. So uh, that was that idea um, for replacement equipment. Um, initially, as you are aware, I came in to request. I believe it was in June. It might have been late May that I sat in front of you to request. Um, money to purchase a new motor for Marine One that had a catastrophic failure. The head had cracked and it was no longer functioning. Um, it was a counter-rotating port side. Right now what I was requesting with this line item was that we would replace the starboard side as well uh, as it's the same age. It's actually now a year older. It's 14 years old. And the last thing I want to see happen to this, uh, especially in the situation that we're dealing with right now, is to fail when it's most needed. And at 14 years, I think we're pushing the outmost limit. We got a scary ground. Any questions on the light items there? Well, actually, I just yeah. have a couple questions on sure. the two that you just brought up, the new equipment and the replacement equipment. So I see that you were saying, you know, what you were requesting, and it's reduced by administration, um, the new equipment, 22950, and the... And, Replacement equipment, 23490. So, but I don't see what those would add, or actually, I don't see items that actually add up to those amounts. The, the initial. So, with the reduction. For, the reduction, right, is a, is a monetary value, but the reduction uh, of the, the total of the 48950, if you look at my line item, was 41000 for the hydraulic rescue tools. Right. And then 7000 uh, I'm going to get it wrong, 190 maybe. Uh, I can look it up for the ice rescue sled. Which totals the forty-eight. Right, I understand that, but now with the reduction, so what is going to be sacrificed? Uh, that's going to be a decision we make if this budget's approved. Uh, what we're able to afford at the time. Okay. Um, generally speaking, especially if it comes to the hydraulic um, extrication tools, they come in in a pair. You have spreaders and you have cutters. Um, it may be that this year we get one, not the other. Uh, we'll have to decide that at the end of it. All right. Okay. I'm done. Okay. Uh, yeah, uh, just same thing on, on that question there, just a little uh, clarification. How many b bodies of water do we have that freeze over? I mean, is, is, in general, can you just, that would be potential yeah. for somebody I think going. It, I think it's five that we're most concerned about, obviously not the ocean, but, um, right. you know, we're dealing with some of the, the ponds in, um, in the back, uh, ice pond. I, th I believe we're at five bodies of water that we, uh, that we would need to okay. deploy. And there's never been a whole bunch of uh, rescues? No, there hasn't been a rash of ice rescues, certainly not. Um, there have been the need sometimes to call in, and we get there, and usually they're, they're you know, shin deep or whatever it might be. Uh, the, the canine in the water, that was a different scenario, and that, that dog was very deep. Um, very simply could have been a child that day. And it wasn't, thankfully, you know, knock wood. Um, but the guys did a tremendous job getting out there and in the outfits that they had. Okay. All right. You're good. And then when you talked about replacing the engine on the uh, yes, Marine sir. One, on a rescue like you're talking about tonight, somebody on the on the rocks, right? Yes, sir. If if one engine were to go down, it would be underpowered in open water, and it, and it was an ebb tide or a flood tide, we'd be on the rocks. Too. It'd be in a, a lot of trouble, right? Absolutely. I mean, so I want people to realize that that it's not something that's just if an engine goes down and you're you're on a flat lake or something, right? If you've got a tide with wind and, and current and weather, it could be a real problem. 
Yep, absolutely. And surf. Um, and, you know, far out there, once you start dealing with the rocks, too, they could be pounded up against the rocks. Yeah. So uh, at night, this is the last place that you want to be with one engine in the boat that requires to. Right. You absolutely, I mean, it's absolutely a necessity on, on a rescue like that. Correct. It's not a, it's not a, a, a you know, something else. Uh, the other thing is, on the overtime wa wages that you were talking about, when it was 325 actual last year. Yes, sir. But you figure the average is... Yeah, we did a lot of work between Fred and I looked at a lot of it, uh, Darian from Fire and Jamie and I all met, and we literally looked at those lines and went across a five-year period and a three-year period. We also looked at all of her, uh, she has sheets for every week's payroll, and we looked at that, how many shifts weren't filled, and so I think that these numbers better reflect, like Jamie pointed out, there was a lot of um, injuries and workers comp leave and stuff last year so i think that attributed to the 325,000 but when you look at it over a period of time those numbers uh reflect you know the averages so we can only hope they don't have another year Amen. like that <laughs> thank you so oh, negative sir Rick. <clears throat> now i'm interested to hear your report thank you i think we're all set there. okay all right, fire prevention. Um, I did make a request to, to Mr. Welch. Um, the only line item that he had deducted from at this point was the supplies and expenses. Uh, and I did request that we bring that back up to what I had requested. So the the regular wages, the part-time wages, that's all contractual. Uh, once we get down to this supplies and expenses, I did bump this up, and there is a reason. Um, last year, we saw 450 children for fire prevention week. And we buy rulers, we buy magnets, uh, that you see them with the helmets and all that about. Um, we buy paper for the permits of assembly, and it's special paper, so it can't be photocopied. And our supply costs have gone up. This year, we're going to see by the end of, well, by this Friday. We had to move. We had a fire, and obviously our fire prevention officer was down there. Um, we're going to see 600 kids because we are including the third grade, so kindergarten, first, second, and third grade. We've also got Sacred Heart involved, and we have uh, additionally, I believe it's two or three homeschool classrooms that are coming to the fire department to learn about fire prevention. Um, last year was the first time that we incorporated homeschools, and it was just a tremendous hit, so we're including them this year. Those supplies were also given out uh, this weekend. Thank you very much for mentioning the open house. The guys did a tremendous job. Um, the Some of the helmets that were given out, coloring books, age-appropriate coloring books, with a message to call 911, be safe in the home. Um, that supply line item we asked to be leveled, and he did. He was very kind to do that, and we appreciate that. Uh, otherwise, no no major changes with fire prevention. Any questions on fire prevention? Oh, Lord. Negative, sir. All right. Very good. Training. Um, under the training line, we have medical services. So that you understand what medical services is, before you get hired uh, in the fire department, you must pass CPAT, which is the initial uh, candidate physical agility test. Uh, it's a minimum requirement. There's a timing uh, aspect to it. You have to do it in a certain amount of time. You have to do a certain amount of firefighter-related skills. Uh, upon completion, that's only the beginning. Uh, there's a written exam as well. Then you do the CPAT. You come see us. We have to make sure that you're medically fit. So you're sent to a doctor to have a chest x-ray, EKG, blood work, um, drug and alcohol screen. There's uh, titer tests to make sure that you're vaccinated appropriately. And um, we anticipated having potentially three. We know three this past year for firefighters. So we put the line item in for three. Um, it's been reduced, but I can tell you that we just found a new vendor. And it's been a lot of work in finding one, but we feel very good about Clear Choice coming in. Um, they're able to provide it at a much greater value. Same test right now. So we'll be, uh, we'll be happy with the, the line item as it stands on that. Um, the fire department training and recruitment has been reduced. Uh, what I had placed forward, and if you recall last year when I sat before you, I had talked about live fire training. Um, and the live fire aspect of it, there was a controversy over the title because people, they thought it was police training. However, live fire means it's active fire, and the firefighters have to work in concert with each other as a team, go in and extinguish a real fire. They're doing search and rescue. They're doing pump operations. Uh, we began that process already. We've had two groups go through it so far, and at the end, I believe it's next week, we have... Get pushed off because of the fire. Right, yeah. Our, uh, our training ground had burned down. So we're actually going up to Concord now for the next two. But we have not our fault. That's right. <laughs> so um, the story for another time. But um, we have two more groups to go through the fire training. As I stated when I was here last year, uh, this is equivalent to the firearms uh, requalification. 
This is group level training that they don't get otherwise, where they're unimpeded by anything else, and the entire group is able to function as a unit and as a team. I think it's exceptionally important to do so, especially now with so many probationary firefighters. We've got five brand new people in the last 18 months, and they all need to work together. And we have one coming in tomorrow, and we have a vacant spot that we're looking to fill. I think the test is next Monday. Yep. Right. So um, fire training is uh, exceptionally important. Additionally, we have open water rescue training. Uh, I needn't tell you that right now our guys are in the water. They're ready to go in if there's people on that boat that have, uh, if the boat's been capsized or whatever, those guys are going to be in the water swimming, and they need to be trained. It would be very uh, imprudent as a fire chief to allow anybody who's not trained to go out into the open water to affect the rescue because they're going to become a victim themselves. The rescue training that we look to do, we bring in an outside instructor who's uh, world renowned. He has an exceptional uh, resume and reputation. We've seen him for eight years, I believe. I think it's eight years that we've seen Mr. Mokri come in and do the training. He's exceptional at what he does. He teaches the guys to get on and off the rocks. He teaches them how to get in and out of the boat, how to haul people while they're doing the same. Um, we have been, through the generosity of the of the people over Cinnamon Rainbows, we've been uh, given an exceptional deal on purchasing equipment. So the equipment and the training go hand in hand, and with the amount of firefighters that we have right now that are untrained, especially the five new people, um, it, the request was made to to do open water training as well, which is, is certainly no small feat to uh, to get financially. So the total cost of that we had submitted was nineteen thousand five hundred. And that sums up that line item. Any questions on the training? Okay, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, uh, so in 2015, the actual was uh, 11096 That's what you spent? Um, that's true. We also, we encumbered funds um, to do some training in that year as well, I believe. I'm not mistaken. I think we encumbered funds. Um, for the, the live fire training, yes. For the live fire training, right. So. The, the following year, I believe that we were at $17,000 that we had requested in for that. Um, live fire training is, is an expensive deal because the, the group that's going is going off shift. So that's what that's about. Okay. It was for 17863 Thank you. Okay. And uh, budget this year was 32000 You've spent 12000 to this point? Th there's several outstanding courses. Uh, a lot of the guys don't take classes over the summertime. As you might imagine, that's busy season, so they're not able to go to classes. Uh, the end of the year right now through the Fire Academy and through the, um, the EMS side of the world, they have a lot of EMS classes that we've been attending. Um, that money comes from, from uh, that part of our education. Uh, we see a, a, a great degree in the fall, so I anticipate that there will be a significant uptick on that. I know that the one that's not reflected here, we've already, I've already spent enough money in the last two weeks to make that bump, but we haven't seen it as a result of timing. Okay. And you requested 68, and the administration was 35. Right. So under that, how much training would be cut? Uh, the swimmer program, certainly. Swimming program. Yep. And um, I would be hard-pressed to accomplish the live fire. Um, two groups potentially would be able to do that. Okay. Not four. And, and how often... Do you, do you do marine rescues? Well, tonight. Tonight. Um, and, and as far as deployment, the boat was deployed. I believe we had a report. I asked uh, for a report today 26 times. There was a running log of the open water rescues, which are not always on the boat. Sometimes we just have rescue swimmers going out. The boat might be deployed and go around the jetty to come out. Uh, sometimes it's easier once you break the surf to get out to the boat than it is to come back through the surf onto the beach. Um, in a 22-month in a period, and I think that ended last uh, spring, we saw 18 rescues, open water. Okay. So Recently we were just deployed to Rye and then turned around, they had a problem up there that they needed um, fixed, and they weren't able to do it themselves. So, so you've been, you, I mean, it's fairly active, it's active. It's a very active yeah, side of our life. Uh, with all the beachfront that we have in the rivers, we have two marine units. We have Marine 1, which is a 31-foot win, uh, winning off boat, and we also have Marine 2, which is a Zodiac. So they're both deployed regularly. Okay. Thank you. Yes, sir. Phil? Negative, sir. No, I, I, you're right. The live fire training is very important. Um, and, and so isn't the boat training. You don't want to ever have anybody out there that's not trained. And uh, knowing firsthand when that boat first came here and the training we had then, which was good, but it was nothing like the training you have now is just what you need. 
So one, one of the things that I'm concerned about, and um, we could certainly, um, with with money, as Mr. Waddell had asked, with the money that's, that would be available, we could selectively go for the new hires, right, probationary firefighters. My concern with that is that for their first year, they're probationary firefighters. They're here, they have a medical experience, they've already come in, they've got their certifications and they've done their training. They're coming in as new firefighters and they need to learn to be firefighters first. Water rescue uh, swimmer training is fantastic, but that shouldn't be their primary goal. To me, become a firefighter first, then we'll give you the water rescue training. Um, we have one who's uh, over probation now, and he's doing an exceptional job, and I think that he would be great, a uh, great candidate to go to water rescue training. Uh, if we have to do piecemeal, it'll certainly be harder to get all of the new uh, firefighters through it, but <coughs> that's one way that we might address it. Okay. Communications. Communications. Uh, again, wages, um, the line item has gone up. We have had steps. We have had contractual obligations. Uh, overtime wages remains the same. Um, telephone, no change. Radio maintenance, we are, we've had actually a discussion today. Uh, there's a line item, and if you recall, I came before you when we were dealing, it was end of year last year, we were encumbering funds to do FDDA circuits. So our voters, which are like antennas around town, uh, they're connected by a landline to each other and to the comparator which listens to which voter is working best. And those circuits used to be Alexander Graham Bell 2 wire. They were not monitored, so if they failed, we didn't know. That would be a voter that was out of service for us. So we upgraded to FDDA circuits. Fairpoint is the provider. They actually monitor it, and if it goes down, they're on it to um, fix it within, within I think it's 12, 12 hours, I believe, is their, uh, their contractual obligation. Um, and I, don't quote me on that, but I believe it, it's a short duration. They find a the problem, they go fix it. Um, this has upgraded our communications immensely because there was drop calls before this. There were problems with especially portable radios making the signal. Um, this has greatly alleviated a lot of that. So what we identified was that the contractual obligation for yearly maintenance is $6,528, and it should actually be in rentals and leases, and Christy and I actually discussed that today. Um, we are potentially going to be moving that line item south to rentals and leases, that 6528 which you don't actually see in this budget. They do see it under the detail. It's showing up under radio maintenance, but like Jamie said, after we had the discussion today, it should more accurately be reflected under rentals and leases. So I will be moving down. that down. It won't change uh, money-wise there. Um, there was a cut at admin level, too, for that. So we would just... If it's the board's choice, we'll just adjust, you know, the difference there. Move the 6528 down and uh, deduct it from the $15,666 that um, administration has put forward. Okay. Any questions on the communications? I have no questions. Seeing none? Okay. Okay. Um, fire Department overtime wages under repair services. Uh, experiential view here. We've been hiring firefighters to uh, assist us in transferring trucks as they go for their yearly service, preventative maintenance, uh, pump testing. We've also had a uh, run, as you know, because we had to replace that single engine on um, Marine One, um, there was a lot of time spent dealing with that. So that line item was um, affected. That's where we went to line item for um, vehicles. And much of the boat work that was taken out then uh, was Comfortable to that line, uh, accountable to that line item. We asked for fifteen hundred and got it, so we appreciate that. The vehicle maintenance side of things, um, one hundred twenty-five six fifty. There was a lot of deferred maintenance on Marine One, uh, as you may recall. We had a very stormy year last year. We didn't have a lot of snow, but we had quite severe storms with significant wind. Um, Marine One sits at dock throughout the year, and we do put it in a winter position. But with some of the storms that we had, there was some hull damage. Um, Minor scratches is still seaworthy, but we're looking to get that repaired. Uh, there's also a situation where this is a strictly rescue boat right now. The pump was removed. There was a pump for uh, firefighting. Should that become necessary, if there's a vessel that, that was on fire, um, the pump is no longer functioning. It's been several years since it's uh, maintenance prior to my arrival in town. Even we, It just was deferred maintenance. Let's put it that way. So here we stand. So that boat had, no longer has a pump on it. No. Firefighting you capability. Can't, you can't get the parts for it anymore. It's a, I believe it's an English make. The cooling so. system is made in England. They don't make it anymore. So. Any questions? 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 Any questions?
questions? Seeing none. We had an exceptionally light winter by comparison to the winter previous. Uh, you'll see that our electric and heating fuel are right in line with what I think would, they would be. They're a little bit lower on electricity. Uh, we still have another quarter to go, and as you have seen outside, it's getting dark early. Lights coming on. I anticipate spending most of that. Um, there have been no other changes or requests. The peer maintenance we did reduce, and um, we're comfortable with that. The um, the at the end of the safety pier, there's a there's a uh, small shed that houses some equipment. It hasn't been maintained um, in several years. We're looking to get it painted, and that's pretty much where we're going. Some of the bumpers needed to be replaced after the storms as well. So, any questions on uh, buildings and maintenance? Seeing none. Any other questions for the so fire chief or deputy? So time? the final is is three million five hundred and forty seven thousand four hundred twenty six four hundred twenty six, which is a four percent increase. It is. And when you figure that three million dollars, and you take population of Hampton is on fifteen thousand. You divide that into the three million. It's about one hundred forty-one thousand dollars a year per person. So I don't think Mr. Bean could sell somebody insurance for one hundred forty-one thousand, one hundred forty-one dollars a year that would cover them twenty-four-seven, three hundred and sixty-five days a year. So I mean, it's an expensive proposition, but it's it, it you're getting your money's worth out of what you're getting into it. And and ours really isn't a fifteen thousand population. When you figure in our summer population, it goes much higher. That's correct. So, and, and I would have to tell you that I think that they're getting an exceptional service. I, I do too. I think they're getting an exceptional service for what we're paying for it. And I think it's, uh, I think it, you know, it, as we say every week and every month, it would be nice if the state kicked in a little bit more of their rooms and meals that because of what we do in the summer, it'd be especially fire and police and DPW, but they don't. So we live with what we have. But I think you're doing a great job. I think you put a good budget together. Uh, Thank you, sir. Yeah. Phil? Yes. Um, Jim is uh, on the hunt uh, with a, a good value proposition about what you folks do, Chief and Deputy Chief, and uh, you're uh, under 400 bucks an hour uh, around the clock to provide the outstanding service that you do, and there's real value in it, and it's a real challenge to, uh, to keep people healthy with the hard job you do. It's a real challenge to find people that are going to fill the ranks and continue to carry the, uh, the baton, if you will. So uh, great job last week. We know that um, uh, your budget does not include uh, benefits, does not include your pension costs, which add to that figure. But your core service and your core value is under 400 bucks an hour. And there are uh, attorneys pushing paper uh, in the state and throughout that uh, charge more than that. So very, very nice leadership. Uh, how many years you got on board now as chief? Four and a half. Uh, as chief, two. Two, two and yes, deputy, how many? Same. And how many in the, in the uh, service to Hampton? 31. 31 years. Gentlemen, thank you very much. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Rick? I hope in your report, it's, uh, it's very impressive. Thank you. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> Again, thank you for all you do. Thank you, sir. I think we're, we're set. Thank you. Have a great night. You too. Thank you. While we are still on budget review, I've asked Christine to see if there's some of the stuff that we've had talked about two weeks ago that we can vote on so that we can get some of this. I think I have enough books, so. Okay. <laughs> I can like, get more if I need to. All right, so I had sent you guys out a memo on uh, Friday just to see if we wanted to discuss tonight going over some of the budgets you've already approved. That will help me so that I can start getting those sections prepared and not have to prepare everything at the end. Um, so. When you go through, there was a lot of departments that meant there wasn't many questions that arose during our discussion, so I didn't know if tonight you guys would be willing to go through and vote on certain sections so that, like I said, I can I think that's, that's good because we'll, as soon as we're done, we obviously have to get to, this, to the budget committee as soon Correct. as we can. Yeah, uh, and this will help me to start my process. They've been asking so. for it, but I want to make sure that we complete our our task like we're supposed to first and get the budget done and presented the way it was presented to us and then as soon as that is done then we can get it to the budget committee but so if it if it helps you out by getting it 
to them sooner by going through some of this now. I think we should. Okay. So, so if you want, I can just lead us through yep. starting at the beginning. That and would be great. There were a couple of departments that you may wish to skip over or have a discussion on, and I'll point that out based on um, what was discussed last week or two weeks ago now. So, uh, selectmen was sixteen thousand three hundred. Um, so that would be the first amount if you guys want to vote or change. Is or there any? Uh, so moved. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. All right. Uh, the town manager section, I skipped over for now because I know that some reviews are being done there, so there could be changes in that section, so I would recommend we hold off on that one. That's fine. Uh, budget committee, they, like I had said, they don't submit anything. They usually discuss it then, so I had just put in 3150 um, and in the past, we've just kind of pushed that forward till we get to their level, and then they make whatever changes they. So I need a motion choose. on the budget committee. I'll make a motion. Second. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. All right, and the next one was trustees of the trust fund for a thousand dollars. Make a motion. Second. 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 All those in favor? Unanimous. All right, town clerk uh, came in at two hundred and thirty-seven thousand nine hundred and thirty-four dollars. So moves. Second. Finance. Department. All those in favor? Unanimous. Too fast there, Chris. <laughs> right. Slow down. <laughs> Finance department, I am asking to be put on hold. Um, I have some personnel things in my department where I know that there will be some FMLA taken next year, so I'm going to need to go back and uh, recalculate and probably come back to the board and ask for some uh, more wages in, uh, under the part-time line item so that I can cover... Uh, a 10 to 12 week absence because we can't survive. So I'll be back to you guys with some numbers and see if I can adjust my budget. Okay. So assessing, um, they had put some increases in their budget for wages. Those were removed um, by administration in, with the understanding that it's up to the board whether they would like to include those increases. I will just review what they were. Um, there was a 5% uh, increase for the town assessor, a 10% increase for the assessor ass assistant, which is a full-time position in that department, and a 10% increase for the part-time assessing clerk uh, that was included in that budget. We did, when the um, administration removed those increases, we did include in the merit line a 6% increase for the full-time assessor assistant. So uh, even though it was removed from here, six out of the 10% was put over on that merit pay line. So I don't know if you guys want to discuss that or if you want to hold off and vote on that at a later date, that's up to you guys. Go ahead, Jim. Yeah, I'd like to discuss it uh, just from a couple points of view, is that uh, the assessing just last, last year went through the reevaluation, which went smoothly uh, the full-time assessor worked a lot with the company that was doing the reevaluation, which saved us a lot of money, I believe, with him doing that rather than doing that. The assessor's office at one time was a three-person full-time yes. and is now a two-person full-time. Uh, the, the increase in value over the years of the uh, town is going up 30 to $40 million a year. So they're, they're dealing with a larger uh, workload you know, so I, my feeling is that uh, that the the full time employee should be brought up to where she should be. I think for the work that's being done. So so I would like to see that included in there. And I also think the assessor that there's no no problem with bringing his salary up either. It's not it's 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 not that you were giving them a raise in here effect we're paying them for what they're doing because it used to be a three person and now we've had growth over the last number of years in the department and there's two people doing it and the assessor assistant that full-time position is one of the positions uh i know jamie was doing a pay review for you guys and he had three um positions that he was looking to that should be bumped, and that's where we came up with that 6% um, that we put in it on the merit line. Actually, so. there used to be four people. Right. Well, he says three full-timers and a part-timer. Yeah, there used to be four people in there. Yeah. Three yeah. of them were full-time, one was part-time. Yeah, and now it's, now it's three. Yes. Yeah. So it's, it's two full-time. So, I mean, you got one whole position not there. Correct. And you've got an increased workload, 
you've had a number of years of performance, and they've met all their performance objectives. Things are being done on time. We got our reevaluation done on time. It was relatively smooth. I know a lot of people complained, but still, the, the work that was done was done appropriately and done efficiently and well. So I would like to uh, I would like to see that th those included left in there. The part time can go on the merit, I think. I mean, I, I'm fine with that. But I think the two full time people. Bill, I, I would just say this is that, um, and, and very respectfully, is that uh, I uh, endorse what Jim says a hundred percent. And I'm just looking at the the, the uh, synopsis here or our agenda, and I'm not prepared to. Uh, discuss that tonight, and I would just prefer, in deference to uh, um, professionalism, to have this come up uh, next week. Well, I'm just saying, we're, we're no, talking about no, pay raises, we have different departments, it's not that's on the agenda. That's why I had it as a highlighted one first. Yeah, it's right. not on the agenda. So if it's, if that's fine, we can bring it up, at least we've talked about it again, this stuff, full disclosure to the this, public. And, and I'm just saying, and this is my thing, I'm, I'm, I'm just not prepared, and I, I, I support 110% what Jim says, but um, I don't feel comfortable just, and I don't say we're winging it. Nope, nope, that's fine, and, and we can hold off on this one. That's why we, I yeah, wanted to have some more, if there's items. more discussion, I'd like to have it and get it out there, and yeah, I had it highlighted too. Yeah, I have <laughs> a couple of highlighted items that I fear you guys will want to discuss, and I fear we'd at least just but bring I, them up so you guys can start your discussion on them and then uh, vote on them at a later date. Yes. There's a couple of departments that fall and, into that category. And just in going forward, and again, I agree with Jim 100%, is uh, if we could just get the salience, a little uh, synopsis on those those deltas, that, so we can go ahead and make that change, and then they're specific, and the public knows what we're talking about, and I know what I'm talking about. That would be great, Mr. Chairman. Good. Respectfully, thank you. Excellent. Okay. So we'll hold off on that one for now. <laughs> And I had that highlighted, so I was thinking that's where we were going with that. Uh, tax collector came in at $103,997. And that was basically a 1.39% 1. 1. increase. Uh, there was a 3% salary increase for the tax collector in there. Um, and that's kind of standard what she and the town clerk as elected officials have been putting in, so. Any discussion on this? So moved. moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Uh, the MIS, or Management Information Systems, uh, is at $210,779, and that's a 2.36% increase. I'll just point out there again that most of that is Two percent of that's related to uh, non-union uh, pay rate increases, so that basically absorbs the whole increase there. You'll see new line items there, like I discussed with you uh, two weeks ago. I just kind of moved money around and did more truth in spending, you know, where things were actually being spent, and put them on different line items and provided more detail in there in that particular budget for you guys. But it's only it's a two point three percent increase. Any questions, comments, motions? I'll make the motion. Second. Motion by Regina, seconded by Jim. All those in favor? Unanimous. Legal is at $176,182, and that's a 1.33% overall increase there. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Planning board. Uh, Brought forward a budget of $150,169. Uh, they have 3% wage increases in there. Um, they put those in in the past, and uh, we looked at last year's budget they were in, and the Board of Selectmen did just move those forward since they work under their own board, and the planning board has put forward those increases. So. I move that one. Second. So, yeah. All those in favor? Unanimous. All right, and then we go to zoning. Some big one here, five thousand eight hundred and ten dollars. It's a nine point four two percent increase. Um, that must be incorrect though, because they didn't really change anything. Thirty six hundred. Oh yeah, they've added uh, five hundred for replacement equipment. That's that copier that the building department is trying to get, and so right. they put the cost across four different departments for that. So that's what your increase is. I'll there. move that one. I'll second it. All those in favor? Unanimous. 
right. General government buildings is in at $98,882. It's a 0.21% increase, and I think you'll see that mostly in your utilities, your electric, your heating, and your water is where you'll see that increase for, come from. I'll make a motion. Make a motion. Seconded. Phil, all those in favor? Unanimous. Cemeteries, I believe someone came in last two weeks ago and did yep. a yep. uh, small presentation there. $124,143 for a 1.37% increase on uh, that budget. Motion by Jim, seconded by Phil. All those in favor? Unanimous. Parking administration. Municipal insurance, I'm skipping on purpose because we don't have our rates yet. So we might as well wait until we actually have the health insurance rates, which we hope to get this week, by the way. So um, hopefully next week I can come or send you something that later this week with those increases there or decreases, whichever way it should go. Uh, parking administration, um, the requested budget was 82326 The admin budget is 83726 uh, for a 10.82% increase. Fred and I, when we were reviewing this budget, were looking at their supply and expense line and um, felt that it was an increase to reflect what they're spending on supplies and expenses. And so we uh, increased that line item under the admin level. So the, if you choose the budget to put forward, it would be $83,726. And how's that compared to last year's budget? Uh, last year's budget was $75,550. And, and we also had a pay increase this year. Yes. Well, that's the right. right. Uh, $2 and it moved them from the 8 or 875 yep. to right. 10, 10 yep. something. So that's why you, that's, that's what why, the big increase is. That's yes. what the big okay. increase is there. Right. But those wage increases have already been made. Yep. And so we looked at that's how many hours a lot supposed to be open or is normally open and calculated the number based on that. Okay. So I need a motion. I'll make the motion. Motion by Gina, seconded by Jim. All those in favor? Unanimous. All right, now let's see. We can go to building and code. So the build that's the building and code inspection, which is the building department, came in at two hundred and twenty one thousand two hundred and forty eight dollars, one point nine four percent increase. And the big thing there was a the replacement equipment for that copier that they're trying to get for two thousand dollars. Move it. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. All right. Under other safety services, this is another section that uh, we probably will want to vote on one and leave the other two for further discussion in the future. It'll be up to you guys. Uh, hydrants, we have in at $484,196, uh, negative 2.04%. Fred and I are being told so far that there will not be an increase uh, in the hydrants for next year. So we're hoping that that is true. And we put through with what um, we based that on what the second half of this year's bill was, assuming if there is no rate increase, it should just be double that second bill for next year. And so that's what we put forward there. So it's $484,196 for the hydrants. Move that. Move that. Second. By Bill, all in favor? Unanimous. And then the other two sections here, street lights, we had talked about last week um, or two weeks ago, and there was some inquiries from board members in regards to switching over to LED. So we're still trying to get some pricing on that. So we'll give you uh, that information once we have it for the street lights. Um, we didn't get that yet, right, Fred? I don't, no, we, we don't have some, but we don't have it all. And then lifeguards is the other one in this section. And the board, I think, will need to have a discussion. We've had two years without lifeguards, so you have to decide if we want to put it forward in the budget again or what we wanted to do with it. So those will probably be two sections that you guys will choose to wait um, and vote on, but that's up to you. Yep, that's fine. Okay. So we'll save those for uh, another night in the future. All right. So then we go to mosquito control. I want to make sure I get all my numbers right so we don't have to do it again. Um, mosquito control is 103,250, no change there. That's I'll a move that. couple year contract. Seconded by Jim. All those in favor? Unanimous. All right, and then we jump forward to welfare. The welfare department um, budget is at 61,705. It's a 20.95% increase. Move, move second. Jim, all those in favor? Unanimous. 
Okay, recreation in parks. I think that's where we're going next. Yep. That's another one that I had had highlighted. Um, there are increases in that for her two part-time uh, parks maintenance guys. Uh, she had requested them. The administration has removed them, so I think that's another one that well, you well, guys need to have a discussion on, and if you need more information on that, um, I can provide it to you. I know that in the detail section of the budget, you can see what she has requested for their pay increases, and if you guys want more, you'll just have to let us know what kind of information you're looking for, and we can get it for you. If she you also should. has a warrant article on that. She does have a yes. warrant article on oh, that. Oh, she does for that one, too? Okay. Yeah. So we'll, uh, we'll bring that one up next time. Okay. Or All we'll right, and then the library, then. Libraries next, their budget came forward at 856191 for a 0.01% increase. Make the motion. Motion seconded by Phil. All those in favor, unanimous. All right, patriotic purposes. I honestly do not recall if a vote was taken, but I know the board had a discussion. Um, when you looked at the... Spending on that line item, you can see that we're spending more than what's been requested in the past. So you discussed at your last meeting increasing it to 2350 as opposed to the 1800 that's been brought forward year after year. So I don't know if you I guys made, have made that decision or if that's... I made that motion last did. time okay. and, and I believe it was seconded, but we can... I'll make that motion again just so it's clarified that we, we increase patriotic purposes to 2350. Yep. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. All right, and then we have town beautification at 500 with a 0% increase. And Move it. Second. second. It's $500, guys. There I don't go. know. Uh, Fast enough, Phil. <laughs> <laughs> Conservation is the same as planning. There's a 2% increase in that budget. That's another one, though, that's just been put forward because uh, she works under the Conservation Commission. The 2% increase is right in line with what the non union did get this year, and she did not get it. Uh, she doesn't get it when we get it. She gets it if the budget passes and they I have it that. in there. That was, um, let me just say the amount real quick. It's $35,525 for her Second. budget. By Phil, all those in favor, unanimous. All right, and then the big, the big line item here, um, municipal debt service is $2,476,000. $549, and it's uh, down 17.35%. I'll move that. Second it. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. All right. So I can move you through a few of them. That, you that can get moves ready. me through a few of them so I can start populating those columns. Excellent. And next week we are doing public works. You are. Yes. Very good. <clears throat> so. Okay. And yep. next week we'll discuss. Gus, or, or we'll get more to you guys if you're ready. To, to those who, yeah, and, and then perhaps more globally, Jim and Mr. Chairman uh, and Director, is uh, uh, look at pay raises in general, what we're talking about, because we got one department and another, and uh, I, I just think that would be better if we could do it that way. Okay. okay. Very good. Town Manager's report. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, <clears throat> excuse me. For those citizens who desire to submit articles for the zoning ordinance, those amendment petitions may be submitted uh, as early as November 14, 2016, and the final submission date is December 14, 2016, 5 p.m., petitions that are to be presented to the Board of Selectmen by statute. For those citizens who desire to submit petitions for the regular warrant articles uh, for any subject other than zoning, your petitions can be submitted any time but must be received not later than 5 p.m. January 10th, 2017 in the Selectman's office. Uh, originally, the rededication of the town clock was scheduled for October 23rd. That's been postponed and put forward. We'll keep you advised. We understand it may be sometime during the month of November, but we'll continue to advise you as to what's going on there. We would ask, please, for an anyone who observes uh, to report any depositing of anything with any catch basin or storm drain, in particular dog waste. We have two other things, Mr. Chairman, and that is the Public Works has announced that uh, between October 31st and November 4th, they will be, be collecting leaves, which seem to all of a sudden materialize this time of the year. And um, 
a solid waste update for the month of September. Uh, this year, 597.5 tons, as opposed to last year of 624.3 tons. Um, with the same on recycling for uh, 251,000, 251, I wish it was 1,000, tons in September of this year versus 265 last year. Overall, they're up, we're up 30 tons in overall refuse for this period for the, from the pre previous year. Excuse me. Got my tangle all tangled up on that one. That's it, Mr. Chairman. Any questions for the town manager? No questions? No. Nope. Negative, sir. No. Thank the you. only one I had is in case somebody saw the uh, agenda, the, the uh, clock is on there and the clock is not going to be rededicated on uh, October 23rd. Uh, it'll be sometime in November. Uh, they're still still putting it in and they want to have it all done before they rededicate it. So be a good thing. They, want, they don't want to put the cart before the horse. There is one other thing, Mr. Chairman, and, and, and I know the finance director is staying for it. Um, the board needs to establish the amount of money that you wish to place uh, against the tax rate from surplus uh, or from the unreserved and designated fund balance or whatever you want to call it this particular year. Uh, and I know she's prepared to address that issue. The goodies. Thank you. received all of the information they need from the precinct and the school district and the town and for our estimated preliminary tax rate for the municipal portion of the tax rate you will see what I've put in uh, front of you it's looking that it will be these are just estimates we have to remember that because it's not set in stone till I work all the way through with the RA but we're usually close within you know 10 cents or so not too much, but uh, the estimated municipal tax rate is six dollars and seventy-two cents. Um, and then I've broken it down. If the board chose to take five hundred thousand from the unassigned balance, it would drop it to six dollars and fifty-seven cents. And if you were to take one million dollars uh, from the unassigned fund balance, it would drop it to six forty-two. So you can see it's about twenty cents or so each time. Um, the unassigned fund balance, just to provide an update on that, it was on the MS-535 that you received, and I believe you discussed a portion of that report at your meeting a couple weeks back. But the unassigned fund balance for 1231.15 is $6,991,520. There was a warrant article, um, number 31, that was voted on at the town meeting for the town war memorial for $5,000, so that would bring the unassigned fund balance down to $6,986,520. So I've kind of given you a breakdown there. At the bottom, you'll see that our current uh, fund balance retained is at 11.53%, and then DRA has broken down, you know, if we wanted to have be at 17%, 10%, 8%, and 5%, and it shows you all the figures there. So right now at the 6.9, we'll call it 6.9, almost $7 million, we're over the 10% but below the 17% for retained fund balance. Um, and I just kind of broke it all down for you. If you do remove 500000 you would bring your fund balance down to 6486520 which still puts you above the 10%. If you use a million, it brings you down to 5986520 which puts you right below the 10%, but still well above the 8%. Um, this will be the item that does need to have action taken before the tax rate can be set. Uh, and so I would need guidance from the board as to if you want to leave it at the 672 or if we were looking to use some fund balance. I provided a breakdown um, on the average family home and compared it from 2015. Uh, the average family home was $330,402. Uh, 
the tax rate was 791. I only do municipal because that's our portion of it. So the tax bill for the average family home in 2015 is was $2,613.48. For the 2016 with the revaluation, the average family home is up to $377,800. So at a tax rate of $6.72, the bill would go down to $2,538.82. So about $70,000, $80,000 there. Or $80, not $80,000, $80, sorry. Don't get people excited. Um, but so I kind of broke down for you the different impact. I was also talking to the assessor today and He's saying that the values and the average family home cost and the tax rate and stuff are bringing us back to what happened in 2008 before the market crashed and all the values of everyone's home dropped and everything. So we're kind of going back to that uh, era in regards to the tax rate as opposed to being up to what I think it was 19 something last year over was um, all things considered like the uh, schools and the county and all of that. So. That is what I have for you in regards to that. Do you have anything, Fred? Do you want to? Well, I'd recommend, Mr. Chairman, that uh, the board consider uh, placing $1 million from the fund balance to reduce the tax rate. I would uh, concur with Mr. Welch. There's been some extraordinary success in uh, valuations here. People still are working hard. It's a working class community. They should be able to enjoy the fruits of their labor. It's their money. And uh, I would uh, enthusiastically endorse uh, Mr. Welch's professional assertion and would make that motion for the further discussion. It. We have a motion and second. I just have a couple. Can yep. That's just, just, just so people out at home realize what's going on because so often they don't. We, last year we had a big confusion over the unassigned yeah, what do we call it? Unassigned fund balance. Yeah. Unassigned fund yeah. balance. You know, where's the unassigned? You get the figures for the unassigned fund balance from whom? The auditors. The auditors. Yeah. And the auditors know what they're talking about. I hope so. I believe I, they do. Well, I believe so I have also. Confidence I just, in our auditors. I just want them for to make sure that people know that yeah. so that we don't run into all the confusion that we had last year right. with mm -hmm. some people on the unassigned fund balance. Right. And when you say uh, 8, 10, or 17 percent, are those, are those suggested percents? Yes. From DRA. Home? DRA. From, yes. And they suggest what? The, the minimum. The minimum recommendation from them is 5%, which would be a fund balance for our community, would be uh, $3,028,915. So we'd be almost double that, basically. Right. So even if we do what Mr. Bean and Mr. Correct. Walsh re recommend, take a million dollars, we are still in very good financial shape. Correct. Safety. The fund balance, if you uh, use the million dollars, the fund balance... Uh, would uh, unassigned fund balance would be five million nine hundred and eighty six thousand five hundred and twenty dollars. The tax, the municipal tax rate estimated municipal tax rate would be six forty two, and would drop that average family home from two thousand six thirteen to two thousand four twenty five. So almost two hundred dollars. So right, right. So just just so that the public realizes that that's a re those are real figures. Those are not. Correct. High in the sky. The unassigned fund balance you, are real figures. The tax rate is an estimate until I right. get back to her. I have right. proof the numbers that DRA has. I came up with like a $50 differential, which will do absolutely nothing to your tax rate, but I still need to firm all those things out with the Department of Revenue. So I always like to make sure everyone knows it's an estimate. Everyone's Excel spreadsheet rounds a little different. So my 642 could turn into you know, 645 or something, but it's not going to be a drastic difference. So, so it should not be. with the public knowing what we're talking about, I support Mr. Bean's motion and second by Mr. Uh, any other questions? I don't have any questions, but I would support that motion as well, that we remove one million from the unassigned fund balance. And I would also argue that, yes, auditors usually do know what they're talking yeah. about. So <laughs> I'd say that that number is so probably 100% correct, yeah. So all those in favor? The one million? Unanimous. All right, so Go. hopefully we will have a, because I know the public has been calling the tax collector on a daily basis, so hopefully we shall have a tax rate uh, prior to the end of the week, and I believe if that was the case, the tax collector promised all that she would have the tax bills out in by November 1st and due by December 1st. So all the residents at home who have been calling every morning and asking her. We, we've had a certain few residents that have, that have called and and sent emails on that. We've also had a certain few residents that have called 
and one was mentioned tonight about the budget being on online. Well, the budget is not is our working budget right now, and until we until we approve that, like we did on some of those items tonight, it's still just a working document. So that's why that has not been published. We don't want to confuse people like it's been done in the past by putting out a whole bunch of paper out there, and then the final thing comes out this way there. When we are done with it, we will print it, we will have it ready, and we will get it to the Budget Committee just as soon as we can so that they can start working on it themselves. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank just you. as long as Max knows that's est estimated yes. tax, not real tax. Yeah, I tried to say estimated many times. Right. Okay. Thank you. Old Thank business. You. Anything under old business? Yes. Well, I was going to save this for closing comments, but I'm going to bring it up now because of what we're talking about. <clears throat> this um, weekend, I went up to the, um, the mountains, the lake region. Um, in fact, I stayed in Laconia. I hadn't been there in years, and I haven't really been up in the mountains probably, I don't know, maybe 15 years. But I was amazed at how bad it is up there. I mean, Hampton is like paradise compared to that. And I just can't believe how many um, buildings are derelict mm -hmm. and have just been left to go. I mean, you can see motels that have 20 units over and over again with trees growing through them. Um, and it made me think from a, from being, you know, a selectman here in Hampton, it, I don't know, know, it must be that these buildings are, the town must have gotten them back because people mustn't want to even own them anymore. Um, is, what, is that what would happen, Mr. Welch, with derelict properties like that? Usually derelict properties the towns don't want because they have to tear them down, which increases the expense to the taxpayer. They're waiting for somebody to step in and to and to sign up for them and buy them and tear them down and rebuild something. Because in a town like Hampton, we've never even had anything like that that I can uh, remember in the last 12 years. I mean, if uh, if we had buildings like that, I can just imagine what people would be saying. And it's not just in one area. Uh, Laconia itself, the downtown area, uh, it looks like a movie set for an Alfred Hitchcock movie. Um, there are so many buildings that are just, everything's for rent, everything's for sale. Uh, it's just hard to believe. And to think of how we do it here, and we manage to have all these services for our people, um, and I'm sure they have some services, but it can't be what we have here. They're not. Uh, it's, you know, it's, it's amazing. And um, it makes you happy that you live in Hampton or in southern New Hampshire. Absolutely. And it really makes me think, all of these places, there's very few places. I, I realize that the season's over, but it's more than that. They have, compared to the businesses that we have that are pumping out, taxes that are redistributed all over the state, uh, we're certainly not getting our share uh, because we're not getting anything from these places. These people, these places cannot spare it. Uh, it's, it's really, it, it was interesting to me. The leaves were as beautiful as ever, but that was about it. Mm -hmm. So, okay. just thought Thank I'd you. throw that out there. Get a sign that one again. Yeah. So, new business. Can I just uh, oh, sorry. What, one old business, Mr. Old Chairman? Business, sure. Yeah, um, Mr. Silberdick's uh, um, performance uh, and uh, the contrast uh, between the excellence that he's achieved for returns. And uh, last week we heard about uh, another substantial increase uh, for our New Hampshire retirement system for our employees. And uh, it's it uh, again. This is an off budget from the department. We mentioned that tonight. Uh, we've got uh, um, health care costs. We've got benefit costs, and of course the pension costs. And uh, the New Hampshire retirement system announced uh, on the 14th they've uh, achieved a, a whopping uh, return in the last fiscal year of one percent. And uh, I don't know what they're doing up there. I've reviewed the minutes from their meetings. They spend about three hours. Uh, they took August off. Um, their investment, uh, independent investment committee. Um, there are uh, uh, folks from uh, those people that 
push money uh, giving presentations, uh, but it would seem to me that uh, they would meet more often. Uh, they could uh, enjoy some of the uh, fruits that uh, Mr. Silberdick uh, provides us to this town. Uh, he is averaging uh, uh, on a weighted value of almost 13%. These are our employees. Uh, they're, they're the performance, and we've talked about it here on this board before, uh, uh, the market across all indexes in the last 10 years is much higher than what they declare for a rate, and they're at 1% and the market is at record highs. Uh, and I, I would uh, invite discussion from finance, have it as an agenda item, but uh, somebody needs to be knocking on that door. It's our money, it's our employees' future, it's $5 billion out of whack, and um, I don't know who's, who's running the ship up there, but one point in record-setting uh, levels, somebody should be uh, fired. And I would uh, defer to you and finance and the rest of the board, but it needs to come up uh, and shine some light on it because that's unacceptable and certainly as uh, leaders in this town with the substantial increases we see and in some cases for, for uh, groups of employees it's 30 percent on top of salary. Five billion dollars underfunded. Um, uh, I would like to see uh, some action and under your leadership Mr. Chairman when we bring that up perhaps uh, have a dialogue with those people. Yeah I think we do that. Um, next week's pretty busy so would you like to do that the week following, sir? Week following, we can bring that back up and see if um, see if the finance director can get us some more information on it, find out what it is. If you want to bring anything in, so that you've collected, I'll work with finance, Mr. Welch, sir. Excellent, Thank excellent, you. Well, very good. Thank you, sir. Perfect. Okay, new business. Did you sign that one? I'm sorry. I thought you did. I did. I did. Yeah. He did. <laughs> okay. Uh, Thank you, sir. Posted speed limit 30 mile per hour, 30 mile an hour limit on Toll Farm Road and Timber Swamp Road. Mr. Uh, Chairman, it was brought to my attention that uh, uh, the un those those roads don't have uniform speed limits. Uh, normally, we would post those roads for 30 miles per hour, um, and that's uh, since they're interconnected roads, that would be a, a favorable position. They don't wear merit 25 miles per hour at this point. Okay, and I and I understand this was brought up at one of the um, the meetings the police chief had. Yes. During during when they were talking about the the truck traffic and everything else, that that Timber Swamp Road is actually marked at 35. Yeah. And Toll Farm Road is at 30, and Timber Swamp Road being a narrower, much narrower. It's yeah, difficult it's in some hardly, places to pass a truck and a car. Correct. That it shouldn't be. So that's why this was brought up. So. Um, any questions, comments? I'll make a motion that we do that. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. ATM at the town office. Mr. Chairman, there was a request from the town clerk's office that we put in an ATM upstairs. Um, I would suggest uh, she went out and picked up a whole bunch of, of uh, items from different vendors. Uh, I would suggest that we take the one that offers a dollar per transaction to the town, which is the highest one we could find, uh, and we authorize the town clerk to put that in upstairs. Uh, the wiring's all done. The, 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 the telephone link, is, the email link is all done. Um, we just have to plug it in, connect it, and have the company come and, and uh, install. Uh, it's Atlantic Capital Group. I'll make that motion. Okay, we have a motion. I'll second. second it. Is that something that has to go out to bid? Do we have to, or is that? No, it's really a financial matter. Okay. Uh, we did we did go to three three separate vendors, and uh, we we picked the one that gave the highest amount of money. There was another one that said, "We'll be happy to give you whatever you want. It's five dollars or ten dollars or whatever per transaction. We just stick it on the person yeah, who's using yeah. it." I said, "No, that's not the name of the game." Uh, we want to we want to get a, a reasonable cost back to pay for our, any expenses we might have, but it's more for the convenience of people who come in, who forget to bring their checkbook, they don't have any cash with them, and they want to register a vehicle. And I said we need something here so we can do that. So uh, this isn't to make a pile of money for the town, but it is convenience for our residents. Well, and one thing is when the when the town when they use their credit card with the town, there's a two point something charge. That isn't bad if it's a hundred dollars, but there are a lot of registrations out there that people are paying thousand, two thousand dollars, and you take you take that two point yeah. seven. Now it's thirty, forty, fifty, sixty dollars. 
a fee on there. This is going to save people money by doing that, and it's a convenience. And and thanks to Phil's suggestion that we go get a couple more prices, we've we've increased our our fee a little bit. So uh, I think it's an excellent idea. And I'm sure we've checked them out. Yes, we have. Okay. Yeah. And they're it's not some Russian outfit. That no, no Russians involved. No. And, uh, and the big thing is oh, Afghanistanis or whatever you want to call. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We, can't, we can't say. It. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I meant mafia. Thank you. <laughs> so, but the uh, no Sicilian connection. <laughs> oh, you know, and there was some talk at one point of us doing it ourselves. Well, we don't have anybody that can fill that. We don't want to take on any of that liability or the responsibility of it. So this company takes on the liability and the responsibility of maintaining and, and filling that machine so it's, it's their, their obligation they're insured for it they're they're a reputable company right. they do it in other places so we are looking at um, trying to find a way to eliminate credit cards in other departments because we're spending as much as a thousand dollars a month in fees for recreation and the transfer station wow that comes out of the town taxes uh, to accept credit cards at those locations so we're looking at some other way to accomplish that besides having to pay those enormous fees. The town clerk is exempted by statute from having to charge those fees, and, and the, the credit card companies can't charge them to her. So that's all worked out, but the other agencies, it's not. That We have to pay the whatever fee they charge. Okay, so we have a motion by Rick, seconded by Jim, uh, Phil. Yes, sir. Sure. All those in favor? Unanimous. Okay. Printing the annual report, County Press. Oh, this is a good one. Um, we have printed this annual town report with the Country Press now. I believe this is eight years. Um, we've been doing this. Uh, we've gone out to bid for eight years, and uh, no one has even come close to meeting their cost. Uh, we print 5,000 books per year. Uh, they're perfect bound. And... Um, we can't come with any other vendors. So what we're doing here is this, even under the purchase order system, we have asked for um, three bids, three, three quotations. They are the lowest of those three quotations. And when, since this report is actually legally the responsibility of the Board of Selectmen, we're bringing it to you and say, can we continue to use the country press? They are the lowest bid we can find, lowest cost we can find. Uh, we didn't go out to a written bid. Uh, we just went out to quotations. And uh, we would like to continue to use them and set this up as we have in previous years Don't until such time motion. as we can find somebody cheaper. Motion by Rick, okay. seconded by Regina. All those in favor, unanimous. Any closing comments? Motion to adjourn at 2042. Motion to adjourn at 2042. All those in favor? I will second. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you very much.